Hi everybody, Mark from Northeast Basson, how are you doing? Um, I thought I'd go over my um, tournament schedule for the year, at, as of now, <laughs> you never know how things are going to change, um, but the last two years, um, I have really fished a lot of tournaments. I was a member of the Bergen Bass Masters in New Jersey, um, then COVID came and screwed up our tournament schedule, and I decided not to fish that first year, um, and then last year I moved up here to New Hampshire, um, so I did, only did, you know, when the one open I did over there in, uh, in Vermont, so I didn't really fish a lot of tournaments. So I want to get back into it this year, so with the way my old club Bergen's schedule worked out, it looked pretty good because a lot of it's in New York, which is actually closer than when I lived in Jersey. So I know I showed you guys this yesterday. That's kind of it right there. That's just other stuff on the bottom. Um, but the main point schedule, and so what I did is I put it on card so it's a little... A little easier to see. Um, so I'm back this year um, and we start in in April. And our first tournament is April 13th. That's a Wednesday on Candlewood Lake in Connecticut. Now for you guys who don't know Candlewood, um, a lot of the New York, New Jersey, maybe Pennsylvania for all I know, um, Vermont, other surrounding states, um, New York, go to Candlewood and Connecticut Lakes in the springtime um, in after the closed season because a lot of lakes um, like being just from Jersey from April 15th to June 15th everything was closed for tournaments unless you did a paper tournament they don't have that closed season in Connecticut so a lot of clubs from all around go there so there's hundreds maybe thousands of tournaments on those Connecticut lakes and Candlewood Lake being the most popular um, Candlewood's a 5,000 to 6,000 acre lake and it's a great smally lake great large mouth lake and it's amazing how it handles the amount of torment pressure, which is ridiculous. Um, I mean, it just gets hammered up there every year, all year, um, especially early in the season, you know, April, May, for all the tournaments. But all year long, they're going in the summer, too, and in the fall. Um, so in Bergen, we always did like a weekday one because then it isn't as crowded out there. So we're going to start on a Wednesday and on April 13th. <clears throat> there's the old hotspots map, which I'm sure most of you guys have of Candlewood. Um, that time of year, you, you don't know what you're gonna get for sure. Depends on how cold it is, depends on what the weather's like, obviously, for those openers. Um, how cold the water will be will depend on the bite. Um, I've been up there sometimes early there in April, and the jerkbait bite is great. I've been there early in April, and the jerkbait bite's been lousy. So that's what I like to do that time of year, um, but we'll see. Um, you know, it's a lot of, you know, finesse fishing that time of year. Um, jerkbait fishing but like I said it all depends on the weather um, <clears throat> since I'm not since our second one is on the same lake we are the Bergen Bass Masters not the Candlewood Bass Masters but uh, Saturday May 21st is our second tournament that'll be point tournament number two um, so our first two point tournaments are on Candlewood May could be spawned they could be on beds then um, they could be done you know it all depends um, being the size of the lake, size of the lake it is, I would imagine you still have some fish on beds. And you have some fish that are done. Um, having fished there in May in the past with our club, um, I know I personally did wind up doing a lot of bed fishing, um, but we'll have to see. Um, by then, those fish are so pounded that um, you know finding some bed fish that haven't been harassed and you know taken to the weigh in, um, it's not easy. So you know you never know, um, but it's still usually pretty good. Um, in May. May it's usually pretty good fishing there still in on Candlewood. Um, so that's our first two. Point one, uh, uh, April 13th, Candlewood. Point two, what is that? May 21st on Candlewood. So that's the first two. Then comes one that I'm not, a, a place that has not been a thrill for me, and that's the Hudson River in New York. Now for you guys who have never fished the Hudson River, there are huge bass in there, smallies and largies, and huge other fish too. Um, but it can be very difficult. I personally struggle on tidal water. Um, I can go there and pre-fish and catch four pounders flipping all day and then go back a few days later for the tournament and they're nowhere to be found. So it changes a lot. Now, I've never been there early in June. So hopefully they'll still be, have not, you know, moved out into the river. They're in some of the, you know, like Roundup Creek and because we're going out of uh, Catskill for that first one, which would be, I believe, is this map here. This is kind of the section we'll be in. <clears throat> um, and we'll see. Um, 
uh, my hope is, my hope is that early in June like that, or well, I guess it's late in June, but earlier in the season, that it'll be a little easier to find them um, because the fish in there are big. Um, and the hard part, unless that gets changed between now and our tournament, is they have a 15 inch rule on the Hudson. So it makes it very difficult. Most other places, it's 12 inch. So you gotta catch a 12 inch keeper, you got a keeper. Because in the Hudson, you can go through some nice big 14 and a half inch fat fish that weigh over two pounds that you can't weigh in. Um, so that can be frustrating when you finally get a good bite and then it's 14 and seven eighths and it's no good. So that's the issue there um, with the lovely Hudson River. So there's my Hudson River maps. <coughs> but um, the potential is there. The potential is there. So hopefully, you know, I don't know. I, I know when I was with the club, we never went there in June. So now that I'm back, you know, we're in June, we'll see how it is. Maybe it'll be great. Um, so we'll find out. Um, <laughs> third tournament. Guess where we're back to? Bump a dump, Candlewood. And this one is a little different. This isn't on July. It's a Saturday into Sunday, July, uh, was that 23rd? Yeah, 23rd. And that's our night tournament, which I have a love-hate relationship with night tournaments. Um, I've had good nights there fishing. Um, uh, Candlewood is a very popular night fishing tour, uh, a lake because you can the, the smallies just will destroy baits. Um, but staying up, and this is a 10-hour tournament. We start at 8 p.m., on Saturday and end at 6 a.m. on uh, Sunday morning. So it's a long night. And if it's a slow fishing night, it's really a long night. Um, hopefully the weather's good. Hopefully there's no lightning or anything like that because that could either cancel us or make it uh, a little, little sketchy out there. Um, but the potential is, you know, um, is really good. I mean, the last night when I did with the club, I think I had 18 or 19 pounds. I don't even know if I was in the top five. I think I was, but... Um, I had a good night, and I, th I think I had a five-something small, and I didn't even get a lunker, so the big fish do bite at night, um, but it, it, it does it does wear you out. You, know, you can nap during the day and, and rest. It's still, you know, I know for me personally that when you get to that 1, 2, 3 a.m., I you know, unless the fish are really biting, I, I get a little tired. Then you got to drive home afterwards. At least when I lived in Jersey, I only had to drive 80 miles to get home. Now I'm 160 miles away from Candlewood, so that is the one lake that's further away, so... So maybe I'll take a nap in the parking lot if I'm exhausted. But uh, but that's our night tournament, and that's our point tournament number four uh, in July. Okay, now we get into the summer months of August. And here's the, the granddaddy that everybody loves, Lake Champlain. So on um, Saturday, August 27th, point tournament number five, we're going, out of, uh, lake, going on Lake Champlain out of Ticonderoga. Um, being a part of the club and other tournaments in the New York Federation, things like that. I fish Candlewood a lot, or Candlewood, uh, Champlain a lot. Everybody loves Champlain. I've gone there on vacation. Um, I have to assume um, late in August, um, the weeds are going to be everywhere. They're going to be nice and green. Um, I'm hoping I can find good weed lines. Um, maybe some frogfish, since we'll be down in Thai. We'll be down south. Um, you know, if not, maybe pull out on the outside of the weed lines and look for some smallies. But um, I'm sure, you know, at that time of the year, I'll be up there for a few days to pre-fish. Um, and like I, I've shown you guys, I got that new camera. So I'm hoping to do a lot of, um, you know, filming this year on the water and get more into that. So hopefully while I'm doing some pre-fishing for my tournaments, I can do some filming and show you guys after the tournament <laughs> in case I find fish. Um, if I have a crappy tournament, it won't matter when I show you the video, but... Um, but um, everybody's looking forward to that one. Everybody loves Lake Champlain. If you're a bass fisherman, it's, you know, one of the greatest places in the country to go to, and we'll be there in August. So that's our point tournament number five, Lake Champlain going out of uh, Ticonderoga. Um, a lot of times you can fish right there by Ty and catch fish because so many fish get released there because there's so many tournaments. Um, you know, I can remember a few years back um, literally getting on the trolling motor and catching them right in that little corner next to the ramp there in Thai um, because you know so many fish get dumped there uh, they're, they're all over the place um, so that's number five uh, number six is October 21st that's a Saturday that's on Saratoga Lake in New York also um, there's our map now Saratoga is probably I'd have to look it up again it's probably the smallest lake of the lakes we're gonna be fishing um, 
I mean, this one, I can actually show you the map. You might actually be able to see it. Saratoga Lake is not a huge lake, um, um, but it's a beautiful lake. Um, I love Saratoga. I've always done well there. The lake just kind of sets up my style because I love to flip weeds and docks and things. And, and um, the topwater bite there is always really good. Um, now, October, uh, I mean, I do well in the topwater there in the summertime. October, who knows? It depends on the weather. <clears throat> you know, I know we've been there. I mean, we were there one year uh, fishing, and it was literally snowing. Uh, by the time the tournament was over, I was freezing. That was that was the year that I decided uh, I'm getting new rain gear because my rain gear was, I, I think I went through two pair that day. Um, they soaked through and I was like, this is it. I'm get. I, I think I got home because my mom, where she lives in New York is close to Saratoga. It's only like a half hour, 45 minutes away. So I would stay at her house and drive over. And I got back to her house with a tournament and I was freezing and wet. And I said, that's it. I said, I want, I'm gonna get the Bass Pro 100 mile an hour rain gear this off season. If, Somebody gets them for your Christmas grade. If not, I'm going to buy them myself because I was frozen by the end of the day. It was brutal out there, and it was like raining sideways. It was, and, and the temperature kept dropping, so it actually became snow by the end of the day. It was, it was rough. But um, Saratoga is one of my favorite lakes to go to fishing. I love going there. Um, I can always find some fish. Um, just it's there, it's to me, it seems the key there is to find those couple of three plusers. Everybody's going to catch fish. Um, it always seems like everybody gets a limit when we go there. Um, with those one and a half, two pounders, two and a halfs. It's if you can get those threes or biggers, um, then you, uh, bigger fish, or maybe a, a nice big lunker, you've got a really good shot to win because everybody's gonna catch fish there. It's a great lake. Um, last point tournament of the year, which is always a thrill. Back to the Hudson River. And the first one, we're going out of the Catskill. This one we're going out, <clears throat> going out of Charles Ryder, which I think is in Kingston, if I remember right. And it's just really the same as, uh, you know, on, on the Hudson as always there. This one always seems to determine who wins Angler of the Year um, uh, because a lot of guys get skunked there. Me, uh, I've gotten, I've, there's plenty of times I don't think I've weighed a fish and I've gone home pissed off um, because it's just so tough getting those keepers. Um, and then somebody will have 20 pounds <laughs> and the rest of us will have crap. But um, if you can get one or two, you're, you're probably in pretty good shape um, because they're, you know, they've, by that time of the year, they're so spread out in the river or are they still in the creeks, it, it all depends. And if you can run into some of those 15 over inch fish, you got a great shot to win. Um, but it's a grind there. It's always a grind that last tournament. So my game plan this year is to do great in the first six so that if I don't have to go to that one, I won't because we have one throw out. Uh, the way we do it in our club is we have seven tournaments, six count towards your, your points for the year and the first place is 40 and then it goes 39 38 so as you can imagine everything's very close by the time uh, by the time the year ends so usually there's five six maybe ten guys that if they have a good tournament and say win the hudson you could win angler of the year because there could be seven other guys who get nothing um they have to use that as a throw out um so we'll see we'll see um, um i've been there before in the fall in late october we're going what october 22nd and done great pre-fishing and then like i said i come back for the tournament and i don't catch crap and there's been somewhere i've caught a few so um uh, usually if i catch one or two i'm thrilled and then i'll just hope i can get you know more than that but uh, it's always been that way there and it always seems to, it doesn't change um so hopefully the weather will you know not not uh I know a few years ago there was a tournament i didn't go to because the weather was just there was like a tornado coming or a hurricane or something and i didn't even bother going but that's it that's our seven tournaments um so just a quick recap, our point tournaments. Seven tournaments, six count towards our points. First two on Candlewood, so we got Candlewood twice, then the Hudson, Candlewood at night, uh, Lake Champlain in August, October, Saratoga, and then the Hudson again to finish things up. So that's the schedule. So uh, Chris did a nice job, our tournament director, making the schedule this year. Um, the other tournament that we have, which is awesome, is our Club Classic. And that's gonna be on the Thousand Islands uh, St. Lawrence River going out of Clayton, um, you know, which has become the most popular fishing destination, you know, maybe for anyone the last four or five years with those huge smallies that they're catching up there. Um, we did a classic there a few years ago and it was just so much fun. Um, you know, it can get rough, you know, as we know. Um, it, it's, uh, it's big water, it's big wind. Um, if you choose to venture, that into Ontario 
I hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't do it because I'm a chicken, <laughs> but uh, um, if you get a calm day, it might be really calm in the morning, and by the time you want to come back to Clayton, it might be a little different. <laughs> so you just gotta you gotta play you gotta play the weather, you gotta play the wind. Um, I know the last time we were there, I believe yeah, I believe it was our classic. Um, we went for the week, and it was so much fun pre-fishing there and, and catching fish during the week and exploring different areas and um, and running around the lake. And the issue that year, if I remember correctly, the water was high. We had a lot of rain, and even in uh, probably August, we were still there. We were there. The water was so high you couldn't even. There were areas where you had to go. Um, you know, you could only. Um, it was almost no wake because the water was so high, if you if boats were flying up and down the lake, they'd be flooding out everybody's yards and, and, and boathouses and things. So, And they had cops everywhere checking on people. So uh, who knows what's gonna happen this year as far as the water levels will go. You would assume by mid-August that they'll be normal and you could run around freely, uh, weather permitting, but uh, that's our classic. So that's always, a, that's always a fun time. You know, that this is kind of like a bragging rights, our, our classic, you know, we pick teams and. And you know, there's I don't I don't think, I don't remember there being any money involved. Maybe there is. I, I don't remember. Um, but we we do it for fun, and you know, we get to hang out for the week together and fish, and and uh, it's it's a good time. It's a it's a really a good time to you know, one of the best things about being in the bass club is when you know the guys get together, go on these long trips, and and hang out and fish, go out to eat, and things like that. So uh, that's our schedule. So that's my Bergen uh, schedule for the year. Um, there's some other stuff on here I haven't really talked about. Um, Bergen does run an open October 23rd, the day after our, our final tournament on the Hudson River. So as we get closer to that, if anybody out there is interested in that, um, that's going to go out of uh, Catskill. And they call it the Bass and Lane, Bergen Bass and Lane. That's uh, October 23rd. It's a Sunday. I know a lot of the local guys love that, that love fishing the Hudson, and they always do very well. Um, but if you guys like fishing the Hudson, um, that's an open for you if you if you if you're into it in the in the uh, at the end of the year. Um, there's some New York Federation stuff in here. I don't know if I'm going to do any of that. Uh, that remains to be seen. Um, I'm going to probably try to. I'd like to maybe try and find some. I know there's some uh, some circuits around here that run some opens on the Connecticut River and start to learn my new my area here now that I'm up here. I get to meet some of the guys, the local guys that fish up here. Um, and the best way to do that is fish some tournaments. So, uh, so that's it, guys. I th thought you might find that interesting to see what I'm fishing as far as tournament-wise goes this year. And, um, you know, I'll, when the time comes, so now what, March? So another month and a half or so, uh, it'll be going. And hopefully when I'm doing some pre-fishing, I can do some, some filming and show you what I'm doing and see what I find in practice, how that works, and how it works in a tournament. And, uh, you know, if I do well or not. Um, you know, it's one of those things, you're all excited to do a video on a tournament, you do well. If you do lousy, you don't really want to talk about it. But, you know, even if you have a lousy tournament, you still learn something. Um, uh, so that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I was going to do a video on some other things, but I'm just going to stick with the uh, with the tournaments for this one. And, and I'll keep you guys posted on some other stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Any questions on any of those lakes? Uh, for you guys who don't know those bodies of water, if you, if you want any information, I'll, I'll tell you what I know. Um, but, you know, I know maybe for some people these maps don't really, aren't that important anymore with, you know, the way our GPSs are and our boats are, um, but I, I love a, a good hotspots map to look at. I always have them, in, if I'm going to a lake, they're always in my, in my, uh, in my boat uh, to take a look at. Because uh, there's other things on there that you may not find on your, on your graph, but that you might see on here that you might want to go try out and at least get you in the area. But I always love those those hotspots maps. I think they're great, um, and I, I'll, I'll never get rid of them. But uh, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Any questions, anything, let me know. I'll see you soon on YouTube. Mark out.